So sometimes it's actual digits, and other times it's the number spelled out. That's going to be interesting. All right, all right. Let's see what happens. <sighs> all right, guys. Let's see if we can do this. Okay, so it's the same puzzle input. And we just have to pay attention to when there's actually these these things. Okay. So let's let's do it this way, like we usually do. We'll copy this. And we will put it. Okay. All right, so how do we want to do this? Do we want to edit what we have? Probably not. We probably just want to create a new one. Hmm. Maybe I should have had part one as its own module. Maybe that's what I want to do. Separate the modules a little bit. I don't know. I don't know. We'll just, we'll just pretend that we don't need to for now. For now, let's just say this is part one. Okay. So what's the actual warn about here? I hate that it doesn't just show me. It's really annoying. Okay, it's fine. I could like hover over it, but I hate that. Hland use some found plus. Why not some? Fair. Okay. Yeah, somebody got the first and the second and the third. Yeah, I'm talking quieter. I could I'm afraid of bumping the mic because uh, I think there'd be too much background noise, but we could try it. Or I could drop the music. But I guess either way, it's a little low. All right. I'm just going to start with this, putting, putting the mic a little bit closer to my mouth, and we'll see what happens. Let me know if it's still way too low or if it's passable it's nighttime we need it we need it to be a little bit quieter that improved it okay good deal hey J, J Jones Ju Jones thanks for the follow I appreciate it hope you're having a nice night we're going to try to finish up part two for AOC day one. Uh, we just read through the problem a little bit and we're gonna see if we can figure it out. So since we already went through the pain of figuring out Parsec, I'm hoping, hoping that this is a little bit easier. So we shall see. Uh, currently, We'd use a one of digits and we reverse and do the other thing. This same problem won't exactly work. Now, technically, I could just write it out. <laughs> Put the OCAM on. 
Uh, I did think about doing like a lambda or something, but I haven't I haven't bothered to actually actually fix it. So we'll see. Um. Okay. Let's see. So let's try a few things. Let's just see what happens if we did this. Uh, so this was number parser. We'll just call this a digit parser to start with. Parser string. And if we say digit parser equals one of, we give it a list of strings. Yeah, that would, it is really good. No doubt. Um, okay, so let's just say one two, three. This doesn't, they're not happy with me with this. What's wrong? Could it match type car with car? Expected parser string, actual parsec t string. Oh, so maybe one of requires it to be, oh, this is only a parsec car. It's not a parsec string. Okay, got it. So we need a different option. Let's see, parsec dot many letter. Okay, let's see what options we have in parsec string. I don't remember where I have it. <laughs> As usual, here we go. Okay, so this is parsec.car. Uh, let's go back. Nope. Um, come on, come on, computer, don't do this to me. Don't give me this kind of shit. How do I get to... Search in package by name. Okay. Is there more th than one one of? No. What about many? That's in text.parsec? Okay. Let's go back to text.parsec and see if we can find what we're looking for. Skip mini one p applies the parser p one or more times, skipping its result. Okay. Count n p parses n occurrences of p. If n is smaller or equal to zero, the parser equals to return. Okay. Between. Hmm. Probably not. Option maybe. Optional. Set by. End by. Okay, turns a list of values returned by P. Okay, so how does this work? End by zero or more occurrences of P. So such as C statements equals a C statement end by semicolon. Mm. No, that doesn't help me. Sub in by chain L parses zero or more occurrences of P separated by op. Returns a value obtained by a lift associative application of all functions returned by op to the values returned by P. Okay. So it's chain L, P, op, X. Okay. If there are zero occurrences,
occurrences of P, the value X is returned. Okay. All functions returned by op. Oh, I see it. It's right here, A to A to A. Okay, no, I don't think I want that. So not followed by. This parser can be used to implement the longest match rule. Okay. So try do string let not followed by alpha num. Hmm. Interesting. Right. Let me think about this. Okay. Many till tell p end applies parser p zero or more times until parser end succeeds, returns the list of values returned by p. This parser can be used to scan comments. Okay, many till any car try string. Okay, let's see. Many till any car try string. Okay, this is interesting. Let me try many till somewhere. Until parser end succeeds. So, right, many till any car. Hmm, hmm. Okay, let's see if we can do this. Just as a test. Uh, actually, let's just change this back to, um, let me just comment these out. Uh, Cause I wanna see if I can make this work. If I do something like this, if we say, all digits. See if I understand what this actually means. Well, let me think, let me think. Does that make any sense what I'm trying to do? Try string. Oh, it's just a string, isn't it? Okay, let's look at string. I think it's, maybe it's just string. probably making this harder than it actually is as usual but that's okay this is how I do uh, parsers uh-huh uh-huh token mm-hmm okay run parser run parser parse <laughs> That's, that's the idea, Nightshade. I'm sure once I find just the absolute right thing, then it will be perfect. It doesn't help that I don't understand how to use these docs. It is in text.parsec car. It's annoying. I swear I didn't see this. Okay, so this is string. Parse as a sequence of characters given by S returns the parsed string, i.e. S, string div, string mod. Okay. Doesn't consume matching prefix. Interesting. One second. Yeah, that is a uh, that is an age appropriate meme. I appreciate that nightshade. I don't I don't know if Mr. Bean is something that people would know. 
Okay, so div or mod parses a sequence of characters given by s returns the parsed string. Oh, so this is or. Okay, okay, I think we can do this. Okay, so let me let me first take that back out. We're gonna do our digit parser. And there might be an easier way to do this, but we're gonna pretend that there isn't. And as much as I wish I could just do it like this, I don't think that I can. So instead, we're going to use this. Let's see if this actually works. I might actually need to import this could refer to either parsec imported from text.parsec. Yeah, okay. So I think if I go up here and add it, I need the parens around it. Then I'm hoping that it's no longer ambiguous. Oh my God, are you serious? So annoying. If I just went back to the qualified thing, it might actually make some of this simpler. No, still doesn't. Okay. Yeah, seriously, Nightshade. I wonder. It makes me wonder. up bestie mod haskell is an is an ml so it is a functional programming language newness but it's also an ml like a meta language i have i have a single mod j cole she is dm mulroy's uh so significant other and she just she just wrecks people sometimes. Yeah. Now I do, it does make me wonder, like, what did, what did Dylan do for J. Cole that she was willing to do this for Dylan? That's all I'm wondering. Okay. Uh, I'm really annoyed that this is ambiguous. Oh, it's because I have control.applicative. Maybe I don't need control.applicative. I might not actually need it because I'm using text.parsec.string, and then I don't have to worry about all the applicative stuff. Nightshade and you have beef. Oh, come on, Nightshade. How can you, how could you possibly have beef with Bestie Mod? She can do no wrong. I don't understand. Yeah, day one does not export solve. You're actually right about that. Now it does. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, I do, I do basically every day. Basically every day, Justine, I tell him that. Now, whether he listens to me or not, that's a different, that's a different topic. Uh, 
Oh, it's because you make the best memes and she's jealous. No, come on, Nightshade. That can't be true. All right. Yeah, I know I'm shadowing first. I just didn't feel like writing out the, the whole effing name. They think I should suppress that? Uh, it doesn't matter. It's AOC. Let's, let's not worry about warnings. Ooh, nice. Yeah, I'm pretty good at that, actually. From, from similar... From a, a, uh, a background of not always having a cushy dev job. Okay, so we did this. What did we end up doing? Digit parser, string one, or string two, or string three. Okay, perfect. So now we should be able to say day one dot parse, digit parser, one ABC, and get one. Beautiful. AC one, and we still, we still get one. I mean, we don't, we don't get one. We get, we get an error. That's what we want. That's what we want. Okay. So then all digit parser has to do is we're actually going to do number parser like so. And then we're going to try doing this. if I knew how letters worked, huh? Oh, number parser is a string, is not a string parser though. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. How do I want to handle that? Let me think about it. Hmm. Hey, Deslick. How's it going? Hope you're having a nice night. I think I missed some chats, but I think it was just you guys. You're gonna go watch Barbie now? Nice. I never watched it. No mod means chaos. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, this whole Brave dark mode thing is pretty is pretty bad, but I have to relaunch Brave in order to take it off. So I don't think I want to do that. But because it's implemented at the browser level, I will say it works on sites that try to not allow dark mode reader to work. Like, uh, I think it's Messenger, like face, Facebook Messenger, doing the Chrome dark mode flag just says, sorry, we have more control than you. So that's kind of cool. <sighs> okay, so uh, let's forget this for now. And instead... We'll just do this. All right. <clears throat> so we have a digit parser. Now the thing that I don't really know how to do. 
You changed in tall by a lot? Okay, cool. <laughs> um, and this is what I was kind of getting at before. Like, obviously, the whole reverse, reverse the string and then find the number at the end isn't going to work very well. Uh, unless I want to create a reverse digit parser and type all of those, those, uh, <laughs> those strings backwards, which would be like a really hacky way of, of doing this. I mean, the thing is I could figure it out and I could do it, but it would be very hacky, right? Um, and the other thing is that I actually want the, the parser to be, see, this is a parser car. This is the part where I'm getting a little, a little not sure of how to do this. Is that I have a parser string here, and here I have a parser car, and I don't think I can do both, right? So, hey Pokemon fan, how's it going? We're seeing if we can uh, figure out day two using Parsec and Haskell. Yeah, thanks for the follow, I appreciate it. <sighs> hmm. So I don't really know the right way of doing it. Now, you're just upset at how your job is going? Ah, uh, that sucks, man. I'm sorry. No fun. No fun. I get it, though. I have a pretty cushy job, and I still get upset. I get upset at about little things that annoy me. Yeah, yeah, that's no fun. Oh, no, it sucks. I'm sorry. I hate, I hate, I hate workplace politics. I, for the most part, have to deal with very little right now, but it's because, like, my company's downsized to literally five people. So, you know, there's, there's, I don't know. Now that could still be like super political, but in this case it's not. So it is what it is. All right, so let's, you picked up a bug and then they handed it off to someone else. Ah, lame. There's gotta be a way that parsec can continue to do a parse and then give me a list of something. And I feel like that's what I was getting into. And then I forgot, I forgot where I was at with that. We were looking at something that I thought might do that, but now I'm, I'm unsure. returns the parsed character i.e. c okay i wish there's a way to turn a car parser into a string parser and then some of this would not be a problem so we used one of You plan on asking for a new team in your one-on-one? -on -one? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, if they're not investing in your growth and you have the ability to move to a new team, I think that sounds pretty nice. Oh, neat. Neat. Very cool. Doing some, some game dev. Okay. We were back here. Okay, so learn Parsec, they said. It will make step two, part two easier, they said. Come on, come on, guys. We knew this was gonna go this way, didn't we? I feel like I'm just, I'm just in the same effing boat right now. And if I just did this all with string manipulation, I would have been done in my original stream. Am I wrong about this? I don't think I'm wrong. 
Yeah, apparently not quicker, exactly purplish. Yeah, that's cool Pokemon. Yeah, creating characters even though you're not a big gamer. It's awesome. Um, the expression parse test input applies a parser P against input input and prints the result to stood out used for testing parsers. Okay, I don't care about that. Returns the current source pause. Okay. Returns the current input. Returns the current user state. Set the user state to st. Modify state. Applies function f to the user state. Suppose that we want to count identifiers in a source. We could use the user state as do x identifier. Okay. Modify state plus one. Return id x. Okay. I get it. I get it. Um, okay, I think this is, I think Combinators is probably where I need to be. Uh, I do not have a CS background. I've been, I've been in the industry for 10 years, uh, mostly on the JVM. Started in front end, went into full stack, and then really end, ended up and joined back end. And that's where I spend most of my time now pretty much all my time in uh, closure. What did I study in college? Crazy things, crazy things. I have an unfinished grad degree in philosophy. Yeah, that's the deal. Okay, the parser p message behaves as a parser p, but whenever the parser p fails without consuming any input, it replaces expect error messages with the expect error message message. Okay, sure. Um, sure. A synonym, but as a function instead of an operator. Okay, sure. The parser try p behaves like parser p, except that it pretends that it hasn't consumed any input when an error occurs. This combinator is used whenever arbitrary look ahead is needed, since it pretends that it hasn't consumed any input when p fails. Let me just think about this for a second. Okay, let's let's try to figure this out. Let's just let's just take a step back. Uh, closure. That is what I write full time. Yeah, philosophy is pretty interesting. I don't know. I was a very different person back then. But I still think philosophy is interesting, even though I have nearly opposite views as what I had when I was a, a youngin. Okay, so let's just talk about this real quick. What What do we need? We have strings such as, such as this one. Okay. Now, do they have any inputs where they do this eight two thing? And then like, like they don't have any inputs here that show things overlapped that actually matter and I'm hoping that they didn't do that oh no there's even 16 that's really bad that's not a real thing though right that should just be 77 let's go back let's go back 
Seven, oh, 76, right, of course, because 16, 6 is part of 16, duh, obviously. Okay. <sighs> All right, so again, taking a little step back, say we have something like... We have something like this. What do we, what do we really have? Uh, let's see. Let's do another one. Four, nine, eight, seven, two. I'm going to need to take a short break here in a minute. Yeah, like five minutes. Okay. So what do we actually want to do with our parser? What we want to do is to treat a one and a four as the same thing. And that's where this whole or thing comes in. And that, that part's a little confusing. But maybe what I actually want then is if I say letter parser, Oh, uh, shit. Okay. How is this going to help me? I actually hate that I decided to use Parsec. Let me just say that. But that's okay. We're, we're deep in it at this point. Because the problem is that digit here, like number parser and digit parser are returning different things. Now again, I could make this. Okay, let's solve for that case later. Let me just think about this. What I need to solve for is, let's, let's solve for the digit parser case. So let's pretend that we have something more like this. And let's solve for this case. How I think we would want to do this. I forgot the way to, is it this? Is that what people do? No. What, what's the thing in Haskell that people always just put a little like thing at the end? I always forget. Um, let me just do parser string here. Is it a star? It might be. Ah, it's the tick. It's the, there we go. Thanks, thanks Indesnir. I need, I knew you'd think of it. That way you don't have to keep thinking of different names. Um. Okay. Yeah, we could do that sometime. That'd be fun. First digit, parser string, first digit equals do. And we're going to say letter parser. Oh, but that's not a string. Okay, let's just see if this works. I don't know if it's going to. Um, digit bound to digit parser and then we're going to return digit okay it seems fine with that it seems fine that i'm like changing different things okay <laughs> Harsh code review. <laughs> yeah, we could do it. We could do a code review one. That would be fun. Um, I have so many channel point redemptions. I feel like already, but some of them probably aren't needed. Okay, so we have this first digit. It seems to be fine just using the letter parser like it is, which is good. 
Uh, let's just try reloading this, see if it does anything close to what I think it should. And then I need to take a short break and then we'll come back and try to wrap this up. So if we say day one dot parse, uh, first digit like this, and we have a string of one, two, three, four, and unexpected two, really expecting letter or one, two, three, four, five. Huh, not what I thought would happen. Um, okay, that works as expected. Weird. I don't know why this would do this. Let me think. Expecting letter one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, four, nine. Okay. So what happens if I do two with this? Okay. So the the or works as I would have expected it. And of course day one dot parse uh, it's just called letter parser oh fuck that's why that's why because letter parser is a parsec dot many Okay. I hate this. I hate I hate everything about this. <laughs> like I'm sure if you had a a background in parsers and like how to deal with these sorts of things, maybe this wouldn't be super annoying. But like I've never actually implemented a parser in general. Like I mean sure, really simple parsing that's different but like I just use string manipulation but like doing it in like an actual parser way I don't think I've actually done it you're giving up on part two for now and is near <laughs> uh that's fair your brain is fried yeah I'm gonna see I'm gonna see if I can figure this out or not I might not be able to uh tonight uh at least I'm, I'm gonna try tonight with parsec if I literally just can't do it then I'm going to I'm going to switch to just some string manipulation. You can help in voice later maybe. Like because you know how to do parsers or because you you know how to do it with string manipulation nightshade. String manipulation and or a recursive loop. I'm going to guess more the latter. String manipulation, yeah. I mean, I'm sure I can solve it using string manipulation. I was just, I was just told that I should use Parsec to make this simpler or easier. And so far, I'm not, I'm not really buying it. So that's, that's how that goes. Okay, give me a second. Let's see here. about that for a perfect perfect brb all right i'll be i'll be right back well five minutes or so
Okay. Let's let's do this. <sighs> it looks pretty funny, especially with the weird changes that Chrome has made to it. Chromium, I should say. Um Okay. Here we go. <sighs> okay, so we need one four as the same thing. The main problem we're having is that our letter parser is taking many letters without ever looking at whether it's one or not. So I don't know how in the world I could encode this into Parsec. Like, how would you identify that this letter I don't care about, but the other letters I do? Maybe there's a not? like a letter now let's see parsec dot mini letter sure as long as it doesn't include one of these <laughs> like one of these tokens <laughs> i mean i don't remember seeing anything like that All right, see you, Colchis. Have a good night. I feel like try is interesting. Try P behaves like parser P, except that it pretends that it hasn't consumed any input when an error occurs. Uh, I mean, it's interesting, but I don't think it's actually helping me. Choice PS tries to apply the parsers in the list PS in order until one of them succeeds, which is the same as the other one. Returns the value of the succeeding parser. Mini P applies the parser P zero and more times, returns a list of the returned values of P. Mini 1 P applies the parser P one or more times, returns a list of the returned values of P. Okay. Skip mini P applies the parser P zero or more times, skipping its result. Skipping its result, sure. Yeah, I mean, these are all great rules for if you're like parsing a epping language, not if you're trying to get. <sighs> Option XP tries to apply parser P. If P fails without consuming input, it returns the value X, otherwise the value returned by P, sure. So option zero, uh-huh. Sep by and by. S 
Okay, set by one P set parses one or more occurrences of P separated by set returns a list of values returned by P. I did think of an interesting idea, which is to make this a parser car, I mean, parser string. I wonder if I could actually, I don't know if it would let me do this, but the idea is what if I did, could do a do and then this was just digit or n. Oh, <laughs> yeah, classic. Thanks, Indesnir. Okay, so D, one of, and then what if I did like this? And then I change this to string. Would that work? No, that's too bad. I was hoping that would work. With parsec t string identity, okay. Um, what if I just change this to string? Just wondering, okay. I mean, I assume that that's not valid, but why is it being weird? Oh, it's just my mouse was over it. Expected string actual car, okay. I don't think this will do what I want it to do, but we'll just try it. Um, couldn't match type car with car. Oh, here, yeah, when I return digit, okay. Um, yeah, we'll just... That only works on tuples. What about first? Can I do first? No. How do you get the first element in a in a list? Is it not that way? Oh, it's head. <laughs> it's head. Duh. Same as closure. I remembered. I remembered right. Right when and near said something. Okay, we'll just do that. Should actually still work exactly the same way if this actually works the way I think it does. But we'll see what happens. Okay, so let's reload and let's just try our number parser real quick and say, um, actually let's do, we'll do first digit. Day one dot parse first digit A B one two three unexpected two expecting one unexpected two expecting one oh interesting okay huh Okay, why would that happen? Obviously it just doesn't work the way that I wish it did. So if we bind this, I wish I, could, I knew what this type was. Let's see, D is a car. It is just a car. So one of car. Oh, but this is just a string. Hold on. And this doesn't work. Despite it being a car. Couldn't match type with parsec T string identity. Yeah, I don't think that that's going to be how it works, unfortunately.
Okay. Well, I was trying. Um... Okay, back to where we were. Okay, well that wasn't helpful. <laughs> I mean, it really still comes down to the fact that like, I have to find some way to distinguish between one of these and just a normal letter. <sighs> and that's really annoying. It's really annoying to try to do it from a like token perspective, basically. This is not this is not a good way to solve this as far as I am concerned. Many till P end applies parser P zero or more times until parser end succeeds. Maybe many till will do it. Okay, this might work. We'll try it. So instead of letter parser, let's do mini till. Um, mini till p end. And then mini, this is the one I was thinking of actually. Returns the list of values returned by p. This parser can be used to scan comments. Okay. Interesting. Hey, Brayon Beta. Thanks for the follow. I appreciate it. We're uh, we're trying to wrap our heads around Parsec. We probably would have been done many, many moons ago if we just did string manipulation for AOC day one, but that's okay. As as the people that have been here for a while know, we don't we don't like to do things in any sort of reasonable or easy way. We, we enjoy the pain. Oh, and Austin uh, followed, I'm guessing while I was, while I was gone. I appreciate that, thanks Austin. Erling Haskell, same thing. Okay, so what was that next thing? Hence common list tomorrow, yeah. If I actually finish this, you know, you're assuming that I'm actually gonna finish this. Well, I actually am not streaming tomorrow. That's one of the reasons I decided to do a, a quick night stream. Uh, I won't be streaming till Sunday. So Sunday we'll do day two in common lisp and see, see how it goes. Um, where was I? We were going to try this mini till thing. So let's think about mini till. I want to say mini till is going to, uh, let's, let's just do one more. Now apparently this returns this. We'll we'll see if that's true. Many till. Um let's do letter. And then the, the till is digit parser. And then I want to see if this type checks, first of all. Oh, letter is a car one. So that's why parsec.mini letter. No, I don't think that would work. So I have to find some way of taking a car parser and turning it into a string parser. How can I use a 
parser hbean uh, for a car and how can I use a car parser as a string parser in Parsec? parse input strings like this. This is test message sample text. Now I wrote a parser for parsing individual text without any quotes. Parse string do car, sure, that's for quote, x, mini, none of, backslash quote, car, quote, return x. Okay, this parses simple strings like this, test message. Then I wrote a parser for quoted strings. Processing, processing, okay. Quoted string, parser string, quoted string do, initial string, okay. Many slashes. Um, not the best. I, I somewhat regret choosing to do this with Parsec, which is a Haskell posture library. And I wish I would have just done this with uh, string manipulation instead but that's okay or like recursion basically oh well all right let me try to scoot up a little bit keep my back street street keep my back street my back is a street quoted string equals do initial string x mini none of okay end oh i see it's actually the the quoted quoted strings i get it end string quoted string return initial plus plus x plus plus end oh it's return it's return that does it okay i think this actually might have solved something for me so let's try this real quick. Return. Dollar. Oh wait, I have to do it this way. I have to do do syntax. And we're just going to say L letter return L. I think that might be it. Okay. So then this mini till, we're going to use letter parser quotes. And that type checks. And then we go here. Boom, boom. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. Probably isn't going to work, but I'm still pretending. Where's where's the one? There it is. Day1.parse. So let's do first digits. Okay, not what I was expecting. <laughs> okay, so mini till letter parser. So this just gives me this. Oh shit, that's the opposite of what I want. That's okay, that's okay. Does it consume it? That's what I don't know. <laughs> You're not going to fix the fact you sitting like a pretzel. Hilarious. Okay, so let's try this. Do. I have a feeling I know what's going to happen here, but we're just going to we're just going to hope that that's not true. 
And then we have our digits and our digits is digit parser. And then return digits. Oh, because now, yeah, that's fine. Now, actually, we can make this not an array or list, I should say. Okay, okay. Let's see what happens with this. <sighs> Fuck. <laughs> All right, I think I know why. I think I know why this happened. Yep. It consumes it. It consumes it. So basically this digit parser is already consuming the digit. So basically I want maybe if I could do a drop till or like a something like that. I were close though. I think we're actually close. This no, this is a uh, this is Haskell. We're doing common list for day two, but first we have to finish day one in Haskell. Yeah. Okay, I feel it though. I feel us being close. Anyone else feeling it? Um, mini till. Look ahead P parses P without consuming any input. If P fails and consumes some input, so does look ahead. Combine with try if this is undesirable. Okay. So basically I want mini till to work, but not actually consume any, any of these things. So we'll see what happens. Not followed by. Took a few hours break. Cool. I don't remember if you said what you're doing AOC and Wayne. Separated by op returns a value obtained by a right associative application of all functions returned by op to the values returned by p. Okay, now I'm gonna guess that this is not what I want. Rust, nice, cool. Yeah, this whole Chrome thing, look at that. Can't even effing tell what these emotes are. Why would they mess with images? So I changed my flag, by the way, for those of you who don't know. I changed my dark mode flag. It's in experimental here. It's right here. It was on just basic enabled, and now I'm gonna try selective inversion of non-image elements and see if that fixes the problem with this. Yeah, I know. Uh, Rust wouldn't be bad for this. Um, I mean, Haskell's not bad for this. It's just the way I'm trying to solve it is annoying to me right now. Okay, parses zero or more occurrences of P separated and ended by sep. Returns a list of values returned by P. Okay, I'm actually thinking maybe sep by is the right, is the right choice. So like, for instance, um, now, first of all, we actually know how to fix this. Fast by T3, thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. Um, I 
Okay, I can actually just do number parser. And then I can say return n. Sick. Okay, so we have our number parser that returns a string and we have a number parser that returns a car. That was for part one. So the number parser that returns a string. Now what we can do is actually go in here and say number parser. I think we can do this. Why don't you like this? Oh, I forgot the tick. Okay, sick. So what's cool about this now is that these should be the same. And it's gonna go down until it finds one of these basically, which I think should be reasonable behavior. It's possible that I'll want number parser at the end. I don't know yet. Let's see what happens. Cool. I like it. Okay, so now that we have digit parser actually working and I figured out how the whole number parser thing works, I'm wondering if step by P would actually work. Step by symbol, cool. Uh, yeah, this, I don't know. I don't know about that. Um. P sep by symbol. Okay, let's just let's just see if we can make this work. I know we could make it work like other other ways, but um are we ready? Are we ready for first digit triple triple quote? Triple tick. It's not a tick, it's a it's a single quote or apostrophe, I guess, but that's okay. Okay, let's try this one out. So we're going to say set by. Uh, actually, we're going to do P and we're going to do the, the thing first. So we want digit parser. Shit, I got into visual mode, didn't I? No, I was just being dumb. Okay, good to know. Um, what? Oh no, I'm in insert mode or something stupid. What did I do? Oh no. Oh my god, I had a keyboard layer on. No wonder. I was like, what am I hitting? How is this possible? Keyboard layer accidentally hit many such cases. Okay, I actually hate using that as an infix. It's just annoying. I mean, I get why they're doing it, but we're just gonna say set by P and then we're going to do letter parser uh, like this and I think I think actually either way it would probably work, right? There's not really a, okay, right. One is many and one is not. Um, oh no, actually we would need the mini one, but I don't know why I said P. P doesn't help us. Um, it's a digit parser. And it's just the normal one. Right, we only have one digit parser. Parser. Okay. 
couldn't match type car with car. Okay, so maybe they have to be the same. It could be that they have to be the same. So let's say many letter parser. It still isn't happy. Digit parser is a parser string. Could it match type car with car? Okay, let's just do it here real quick. <sighs> Could it match type car with car? Expected parsec t string, identity car, actual parser string. In the first argument of set by, namely digit parser. Okay. Let's let's read set by again, because maybe Okay. So set by P sep Oh, it has to be A. No, it returns a list of A. Okay. Returns a list of values returned by P. Sure. So parsec t sep is sep here like an actual type or is this just a that's what i don't know is sep an actual type or is it not let's look at symbol it that isn't a thing Symbol is a normal type, like a normal function. Okay, nope. <laughs> it must be from data.car. I don't know. Weird. Why are you guys using weird shit? That's the question. Oh, shit. Okay. Here we are. Monad and parsec t sum source pause. Okay. Get position, get input, get state, put state, modify state, combinators. Um, there were some interesting examples in one of the tutorials that might actually make sense now that I've gone through all this. Skip many p applies the parser p zero or more times, skipping its result. Sure. Um. Problem is, I wish I had like a skip until without, and then it would just return the until part. The thing that's annoying. In by p, sep parses zero or more occurrences of p separated and ended by sep returns a list of values returned by p. So c statement in by semi, sure. Sep in by uh, chain. We've already read all these like 18 times. Not followed by P. Only succeeds when parser P fails. Parser does not consume any input. That a keyword is not followed by a legal identifier character in which case the keyword is actually an identifier. For example, let's, we can, pr oh, this might, this might actually work. This might actually work. Okay, okay. What if our letter parser had a not followed by only succeeds when parser p fails uh-huh uh-huh okay um i don't know if this is actually gonna work 
but let's say we had a not followed by digit parser. And then we did a return L. Be really nice if this worked. <laughs> and then uh, now the the problem is, yeah, okay, I see, I see. I think I think I got this. Okay, so let's forget about this one, and instead. It just works, yeah. Um, this is what I get for listening to people that have written Haskell for a long time telling me how I should do this. Or at least have had a lot more time to figure out Haskell than I have. Okay, I can't remember what the fuck the, the parser's called. Letter parser, okay. Letter parser this, okay. Now the thing is, I want uh, I want mini. Uh, let me think. Do I want one? Yeah, I want mini one. Letter parser. Um, only succeeds when parser p fails. This parser does not consume any input. This parser can be used. Uh huh. Okay. And I guess the point is Yeah, I w I'm so annoyed that mini till doesn't work. Look ahead p parses p without consuming any input. If P fails and consumes some input, so does look ahead. Okay. Um, okay, let's just see what this does anything close to what I want. So let's say we do a mini one letter parser. And that is our L not followed by digit parser. Mm -hmm. And then if we do the other letter parser, uh, actually it's not letter parser, it would actually just be letter. And then we do digit parser. Let's see what happens. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful. We're going to say day one dot parse digit parser. Now, I'm going to go with first digit. Okay, that's fine. Unexpected one. Okay. Hmm, unexpected one. Okay. So this time it got to the one, which is actually what I want. And that's because, right. And then it finally hit it. Huh, right. So let's read now what try does and see if I, if I get that. Ooh, actually this could be, this could be really good. Um, oh, this might, this might do it. Let me think, let me think. What if we did, instead of this, we did skip mini one letter parser. Let's see what happens. Still the same thing. I mean, the thing is, I, I can, it. I mean, it's the same thing in a way that's nicer in some ways, like it, it gives me that. Um, 
I wonder if doing try not followed by would be good. Let's look at try real quick and then I need to wrap up. The parser try, I've read this like eight times, but maybe you'll actually get it. Uh, except that it pretends it hasn't consumed any input when an error occurs. Yeah, that's exactly what I want. Uh-huh. Even when the first parser failed while consuming input. Okay. So I think what I want is skip mini one try letter parser let's see if this will work <laughs> big clap big loud nighttime clap okay Thank fucking God. Okay, now what happens if it's at the beginning, though? Yeah, that's what I thought was going to happen. Okay. That's okay. Let's just think about this. Um, what if I do... Okay. Okay. We just have to think through this. Realistically, I should go to bed. I think I got a win, though. Like, this actually does what I wanted it to do. <laughs> like, I don't think this is going to help me that much. Okay. This one is the winner. Okay. So the question is, how do I get it to work in this scenario? I don't know, but I think we're really close because I've got the skip mini one. We do try letter parser, then we have letter and then we have digit parser. So let me think about this. If we say day one dot parse, let's just do this one first. Skip mini one, try letter parser one. Okay. That's not what I was expecting. Okay, it's fine. Interesting. Thinking about it, thinking about it. Why the hell would that happen? Skip mini one, try letter parser. Oh yeah, so it, it eventually, no, I think I get it. I think it's just because I don't have anything there. Um, so let's do this. No, maybe I don't get it. Oh, right, because I did a try. And so on the try, so now it's just returning unit because that's what the, that's what the try does. If it doesn't, if it doesn't find what it needs to find, I guess. Okay, that's fine. Um, Right. Okay. <sighs> Let me just think about this. ABC1 worked. I did the letter. Letters are literally just a single letter. But if there is no letter, that's when we would have issues. Right? Mm hmm. Yeah, let me just think about this.
what was what was my other idea? My other idea was doing a is it mini till that gives you that that list at the end? Mini till is one of the ones that gives you the list. Okay. So that gives me skip many. I like that. I guess I was wondering if I can do a mini till end, but maybe that doesn't make sense. What is it, 1008? Yeah, okay. I probably need to stop. Let's see. Let's see, let's see. Okay, cool. So I'm I am happy that I at least got this, and I'm pretty sure that's going to set me up for what's next. And if I did one, it should give me one. But the thing that's not working is if I don't have anything. Now this should work. No, that doesn't work either. Okay. And that's because I did skip mini one. Um Maybe what I want, oh, maybe I just want tries all the way down. I don't know. I don't know if this is true, but I'm thinking that I may just want tries all the way down. Let's just try this real quick. Let's try it real quick, right, right? Nope, unexpected one. Shit. Try, skip mini one, try letter, digit parser. And if I go back to ABC, so it has the same behavior. Except here, expecting letter unexpected one yeah um the only reason it's tough is because i'm trying to use parsec if i if i just did it manually it would be fine i would be done but i'm being stubborn and deciding to use this um did i start from learn you a haskell book uh so I originally learned Haskell five years ago, and I used the Haskell programming from First Principles, which is a mammoth book, and we did an in-person study group uh, in the place where I lived at that point. And then I haven't written Haskell for four years. <laughs> so I forgot basically everything except a relative affinity for the language and uh just like concepts like you know auto occurring partial application monads like all those different things like i kind of kind of have a good sense of those things like how that works but like not touching it for four years for a language that is relatively complex um is is not is you know i forgot a lot of like actually how to use it and it's not like i used it at work or something you know i just used it on the side so that's definitely part of it um okay good deal yeah so i'm gonna go hang out with my partner uh we're going to continue this tomorrow i'm pretty sure that i can get this to work uh, not tomorrow. I'm sorry, Sunday. So I might I might play with this a little bit more on Discord uh, tomorrow at some point, but I won't stream until Sunday. So anyway, thanks guys for hanging out. I appreciate it. Looks like looks like uh, VLC decided to stop playing and give us this weird view. 
Okay. Interesting. Oh, I forgot to put it on repeat. It's it's me. It's a skill issue. No one's surprised. Uh, but yeah, thanks thanks everybody for hanging out and the chats and uh, hopefully hopefully we'll have a happy ending to our parsec adventure. Otherwise, we'll just do it string manipulation and be done and move on to common lisp. You know. Uh, so so we'll we'll see what we'll see what actually ends up happening. Um, if you want to get string notifs, they're on Discord. You could also follow me on Twitter. I have a bunch of VODs, including a couple of like reintroduction, reintroducing myself to Haskell along with 11 other languages on YouTube. So if you want to check those out, you can. Um, and some Rust stuff, if that's your jam, that's all there on YouTube as well. So anyway, I appreciate everybody hanging out. Let's see who we should raid. And we'll uh, we'll move on. Let's see who's going. Who's going? Ganesh Bean. Oh, bad cop's going. Yeah, we'll we'll raid bad cop. Well, if I could type. That might help. All right. Awesome. Thanks, guys. We'll see ya.